Hey y'all, it's Miriam and it's we're back for another session with this. This is actually still just day one. I know I said in the last video I was going to come back on day two and we were going to get into the oil, but as I've sat with this for the rest of the day, there's a few areas I want to resolve a little bit more before I actually start into the oil piece. Um, mainly this neck area, um, and may maybe we'll get into some background issues. There, it's just not as clean as I would love it in this area. So yeah, that's I'm going to focus on the neck for a little bit. Um, what I really want to do is bring out the sense of form here. Like if I just isolated this area right here, there'd really be no indication that this was a round cylindrical object. So I'm going to kind of start on the outsides and then work my work my way in. So um, yeah, we'll get into it. All right, good morning, everyone. It is the next day, and um, we have pretty much everything done for the acrylic portion with the face, the body, background, this stuff. The only thing I have left to do is I want to better block in the hand here. Um, just make it a little more interesting. Right now, it's a little doll looking. I have gone in. You guys can see I just added a few lines right here for the fingers um, just to act as like a little grid for myself when knowing where to put the fingers and where I'm going to mark in all my shadows and everything. Um, I did this using Photoshop. I just digitally overlaid. Um, I took a picture of my reference photo or my painting and then overlaid it with my reference photo. And um, that just gave me a general idea of where my fingers are gonna go. I sometimes do that with more complicated items like hands. Um, I could certainly do it without, but it just, um, it just takes a lot longer and it's a nice time-saving tool. So don't be afraid to pull out digital tools like that whenever you need it. Um, so yeah, that's what you guys are gonna see me do. And then right after, we're gonna let this fully dry and uh, we're going to get started on the oils. All right, so here's where we're at so far. Um, the hand is really funky looking. It's not at all accurate or precise. Um, like I said, my plan is to render out this hand fairly realistically. I just wanted to have these nice shapes underneath because once we put the acrylic on top, a lot of this is still going to shine through and it's going to provide a lot of color variation, a lot of interesting textures, um, just a lot of visual interest. So uh, that's what the goal was there. Um, yeah, I'm excited for this next step. It's always nerve wracking. I quite like it how it is so far. So the idea of covering it up with oil um, is a little daunting, but I think it'll all be worth it. Now, big areas, like a lot of this, I'm gonna leave 
a lot of the big areas I want to leave how it is. I think it looks just fine. My main focus will be bringing out form, rendering um, the edges. All right. And um, yeah, that's that. those are really the big steps. And then also I'm going to add some color variation into here, some interest into here. I want to bring back some, some of the arm in here with some transparent layers. Um, I think that'll all be really fun and just cook, make for a cool portrait. So um, yeah, we'll give, we'll give it some time to dry. And when you see me again, we'll get into oils. Now, one of the big questions I always get asked is, am I using the exact same colors in oils as I am acrylics? And the answer is yes and no. Um, I am using a lot of the same colors like um, cadmium orange, for example, but the cadmium orange that I'm using in the acrylics is very different looking than the cadmium orange in my oils. Um, I'm not looking to purchase oils that match my acrylics exactly and vice versa. Um, I will be trying to mix up specific colors to match once I get into these areas. Um, but other than that, um, yeah, the, the color, I'm, I'm not looking to match it all exactly. I'm, I'm looking, I actually, and it's one of the reasons why I don't pre-mix all my paints to begin with is because I love the natural color variation that comes when you don't pre-mix and, um, when you paint as you go. So it doesn't bother me if the colors don't match exactly. I think it adds for a lot of cool variation. All right, I think I've rambled enough. All right, let's talk about the palette real quick and the brushes. So I've got my palette set up with my oil colors. It's my standard palette, but I will share the colors. We've got Craplax Rose, or um, I think, I'm trying to think of what the American name is. I use the old Holland brand and it just says, it says Craplax Rose. Oh, Antique Rose. Okay, uh, Ultramarine Blue, Cad Orange, Indian Yellow Lake Extra, Burnt Umber, Alizarin Crimson, and Titanium White. I'm not using any medium. All the paint is gonna be straight out of the tube. I'll probably get through this whole painting um, without using any sort of medium or thinners. That's just the goal. I don't know, maybe at the end I'll glaze in some stuff. We'll see once we get there. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna start with the nose. It's typically where I like to start with when I'm working with oil um, and I get to this stage. Um, I just think it's a fun area to start. Um, I did have to move this a little bit because of the glare from the big lights for a recording. So hopefully you guys can still see it all right. But um, yeah, we'll get started. If you have any questions along the way, let me know. All right, um, a few other things about my setup. I have this rag sitting here uh, on my knee so I can constantly be wiping off all the paint on my brush. I typically lay down my color and then we'll wipe off the brush and then go in and blend. Um, it's my favorite way to do it. I find it really easy and flexible um, and it lets me just go, go slow. So that's what I'm doing right now. All right, I'm gonna play a little bit of this in real time so you can see um, just how slow this process is. Um, I know I play a lot of my stuff in time-lapse mode and it can make it seem like things go a lot faster than they really are. So I'm gonna play a little bit of this in real time just so you guys can see. One of the other things, as I'm lightening these areas, um, 
I, I'm always being conscious not to just add white. I'm always adding white and a color. I don't want to lose my saturation levels. All right, so we'll, we'll go back to time lapse. I'll start fast forwarding, but I just wanted you guys to see how slow the process is. Um, and I don't know if the camera can pick up um, just how much of a difference this made. Um, we still have a long way to go, but I think for a first pass on the nose, uh, it's already looking good. I haven't lost the character of the painting. I've just helped um, helped polish it a bit. All right, all right. Um, I also wanna point out, I'm gonna show you guys my palette. Um, let's see if I can get it to focus on that. Okay, so if you could see up close, this paint is like so thin. I, I really haven't used much paint at all um, to even get this far. Um, so I just don't want you to think that I'm putting big thick globs of paint on it. All right, this is um, one of the biggest things that you can do is change your viewing position. It's actually why 
one of the reasons why I keep looking back at you guys, I don't know if you noticed, but I, I'm constantly looking back at the camera, one, to make sure I'm still recording, but also two, it changes my perspective. Um, so I just stood up and made some changes um, that were kind of glaring mistakes, but I just couldn't see because I was sitting too close. Um, that's why at the beginning of this whole process, you guys saw I didn't really sit at all until I got to this stage. Um, being mobile on your feet and constantly viewing your painting at different angles will help tremendously. All right, and this is where we're gonna leave it for this session. Um, I think we've made a lot of progress just going in with the oil and really rendering out some of these shapes, adding form, or at least the beginnings of it. Um, I'll do a quick flashback before we started oil to now, just so you can see the difference. And again, here's my palette. Let's see if it'll, it's not gonna focus, but I really didn't use much oil at all. Um, really thin layers of oil in there. Um, and I've just used them in strategic places, mostly anywhere a form rounds, so anywhere it turns, um, and also on the edges. Um, you know, side profiles, you gotta, you gotta really nail those, that, um, not the perimeter, silhouette. You gotta nail the silhouette. Um, okay, so the next time I see you guys, we are going to continue working on the face. Um, I wanna keep working on that hairline. I haven't touched the ear at all. Work on the body a little bit. Um, I'll probably just add some, maybe some highlights to bring out the form. I don't wanna to do too much on the body. We're gonna add some fun stuff here and the hand is gonna be fun to render out in oil. So. Yeah, that's it. Hopefully you guys are liking it so far. I'm super excited about the progress. And as always, if you have any questions, let me know. And if you enjoy these kinds of videos, please let me know in the comments and consider subscribing to my Patreon. Um, my folks over on Patreon, I can't thank you guys enough. You guys make these videos possible. So thank you. Bye.